The year was approximately 570 CE. By this time, the people of the Arabian Peninsula had been practicing idol worship for a number of years. In fact, paganism had become an integral part of the people's livelihood, where various tribes would compete with one another to create unique idols in hopes that it would attract more tourists to the area and boost their economy. None were more successful in this endeavor than the people of Mecca. And by the end of the 6th century, the city of Mecca had become the center point for all religious tourism and trade in the region. That was until a Yemeni king by the name of Abraha had decided that he wanted his kingdom to the south to become the central religious and economic point in the Arabian Peninsula. And so, Abraha devised a plan to create an immaculate building that would be so grand it would overshadow the city of Mecca and attract all of its tourists and business. Of course, this news didn't sit well with many of the tribes in the region who held the city of Mecca in high regard. One night, a short while after the initial opening of Abraha's new building, a lone tribesman managed to sneak into the area undetected. He then proceeded to desecrate the whole building. The next day, when news of the vandalism had reached Abraha, he became extremely upset. For he knew that this was done for no other reason than to extract revenge for his challenge to Mecca. And so, Abraha gathered his troops and announced that he intended to go and destroy the sacred house in Mecca once and for all. Abraha and his men then made their way northwards, only facing small pockets of resistance, which they easily crushed. When news of the army's approach reached the city of Mecca, the people knew that they couldn't possibly fight off such a large number of men. And so, the people of Mecca decided that their only option was to retreat to the surrounding mountaintops and wait until Abraha and his men had fulfilled their task and left. By the time the army had reached the outskirts of Mecca, the city was completely empty and it seemed as if there was nothing that could stand between Abraha and the sacred house which he had come to destroy. The army then began to march onwards, but then suddenly, Abraha's elephant refused to go any further. And it was then, at that very moment, that God's punishment appeared on the horizon. One of the reasons why the people were so terrified of Abraha and his men was because they used to employ elephants in their army, which is considered one of the largest creatures in the animal kingdom. And so, God Almighty responded to Abraha's arrogance by sending an army of one of the smallest and most harmless creatures on earth to destroy them. As the flock drew near, the birds then quickly began to descend casting their stones on Abraha and their men with such speed and force that it's said that most of the men were killed right on the spot. When the dust had finally settled, the once massive army, whose ranks were so large they appeared like stalks of grain, had now been completely decimated and destroyed, scattered across the desert lands as if they were trampled fields, eaten away by cattle. As all this was taking place, some distance away, far upon the mountaintops surrounding Mecca, the people of the city stood and watched in amazement as everything unfolded. This was a scene that for many would shake them to their very core, and was an event so amazing that the people of Mecca would forever refer to that year as the Year of the Elephant. 
God Almighty would later address the people of Mecca in the Quran, saying, Have you not seen how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant? Did he not throw their plot completely off course, and then sent upon them an army of birds, striking them with stones made of clay, thus leaving them as if they were nothing more than fields devoured by prey? <laughs>